Balcho. She's here talking with us about her role in Hallmark's new movie, For Better or For Worse. It's good to see you. Good to be back. Working with Kim again. Kim Fields, yes. right? Yes. How fun was that to be it reunited? It was so much more fun, even than originally, because I think the older you get, the more you really appreciate things. And so I, I loved working with her, and I would be in the middle of a scene. I'm saying my lines, but I'm thinking, she is so funny. She is so good. <laughs> so it was just really great. It brought back great memories of the time that you were together. It did, and, you know. yes. What are we going to see? You brought a little something cool. for us to take a look oh, well, at. Well, the, the movie is about a, a wedding planner, and a divorce attorney moves in next door. And uh, this particular scene is where he's come over, where I, as a wedding tr planner, is trying to put together a wedding. He brings up the groom's previous divorce, which the wife didn't know about. Oh, huh. wow. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Awkward. Yes, right. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? I'm in there trying to plan a couple's wedding, and you're bringing up his divorce and I, prenups? I'm just trying to protect him. You give a marriage two weeks, and I will give you grounds for divorce. And by the sounds of it, they don't even need two weeks. When did you become so cynical? Most marriages end with both people trying to inflict as much pain on one another as humanly possible, which is exactly why Sophia will never marry your son. Not if I can help it. Great. At least we agree on one thing. Great. So what are you going to do about it? Me? What are you going to do about it? Well, I've always been able to talk to Colin. Really? <laughs> oh, no, no. I can tell by the way he shared his engagement with you. I will handle my son. You handle Sophia however you wish. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys get together? Oh, is it it's Hallmark. Hallmark. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> okay. But this is like... really, you were drawn, I uh, understand, to this material because it's about a woman who's facing her fears and taking risks. Well, yeah, it's actually about a woman who's not facing her fears yeah. and taking a risk and um, just kind of hiding out in her business and in her children. And then she's faced with, uh-oh, um, I'm still alive and a woman and there are still feelings that I have, but then terrified by those very feelings. Sure. Why did, the, why, why did that strike you? Well, um, I was married for 23 years, homeschooled my kids. My husband worked at a church. We just had the you know perfect little home. And then things began to fall apart. And suddenly, I found myself, nothing was the same. Uh, my kids were grown and going off to college. I had to figure out, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to be when I grow up? So I moved back to California to pursue acting again. And everything was just completely different. It was starting over, um, you know, and, and being 50 at the same time. Oh, well, you, you really, it's, it's about taking risks, but you really took a risk when you decided to join the cast of Survivor. I mean, that's like the opposite end of the spectrum, going from your house into something like that. What made you decide to do that? Well, I had read a book called The Barbarian Way, and there was a part of me, speaking of the alluring and yet the terrifying, it was about not living so much in your head, but kind of a little bit more from your gut and from your soul. And I loved the thought of that, but I didn't know how to get there. I'd lived so much in my head. And so I tracked the author down, uh, had lunch with him, and I said, okay, I get it, but how do I get it? And he said, put yourself in situations where you're not in control and it'll happen. And so I signed up to be on Survivor and man, was he right. <laughs> but what do you say, because not everybody can get on Survivor in a TV show and right. what have you be, but what about people who are out there who hit midlife, as I did this year, um, and sort of kind of look around and realize things aren't the same anymore. My kids are grown up. There's a, I mean, what, what do you, what, what do you want to say to them to reach out to them saying, hey, here's the first thing you should do? Well, I think we're afraid to trust our heart. Um, I think that we're afraid that, it, because our heart can be messy and it's, and it's not as controllable as the mind. And so we want to control things and the heart can't be controlled. And yet that's the very thing you need to do is listen to your heart and follow it. And it probably will be messy. It will probably be uh, full of mistakes and failures. And that yet that's where you'll actually taste and see and feel life and know yourself. How difficult was it for you because now you were faced with uh, being a single mom. That has to be frightening because you, you had a very tight little community there. You homeschooled your children. You were involved with the church and now you are a single mom. How scary was that? Well, it's still scary. I, I've been divorced over two years and I had my very first blind date 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, and and then and then I somebody dared me to sign up for um, you know online dating, which I did, and then immediately the next morning deleted my account. Why? So. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> because you I'm made it through Survivor. Scared. You can't push send. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, really? what, what? maybe if the man had a million dollars, I wouldn't push send. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is that process like when you're signing up online, going, I'm about to put all this information out there it's it's really it was really scary it took me a long time to actually do it but then what was scarier was then when I got you know responses because then I had to listen to my heart I wasn't yeah. ready I know I really I knew it I was doing it because somebody told me it was time I needed to do it but then when I started getting responses it I, I'm not I'm just I'm not ready was I'm your, not ready was at least your, for a stranger this your first date in 23 years the blind date oh uh, well 25 years 25 because, yeah yeah because she was married husband. you couldn't date yeah her married. Yeah. You know, you had to, yeah what was so that we, what was yeah. that experience like for you did you feel like you were 16 again or whenever you went out on it oh a date? oh or yeah I took it, all day to get ready my daughter took off work to help me figure out oh. what to wear and to do my makeup so it was very uh, much role reversal because I did this for her when when she was 16, oh. help her get ready, help her pick out what to wear, peek out the window to see what he looked like. <laughs> and yet now it was totally her being that for me. And well, you, it was very fun though. You said something very important though. You said that you, you wanted to go on the date, but you weren't ready. How important is it for you to have to heal first before you put yourself out there again? Well, it's important for a lot of reasons. For one thing, we are going to be drawn to our same level of health or unhealthiness. And so I want to take time to make sure that I deal with the issues that, um, you know, that are unhealthy in me so that I can be attracted to and attract a, same, a, a level of healthiness. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to be the proverbial girl still looking for daddy and having those daddy issues, and then that just never works. Yeah. That's very interesting. Well, Thank you for sharing that. Well, I'm excited yeah. to see Better for Better or for Worse. Yeah. I think it's... It's a very fun, cute movie, and that's why I wanted to do it. I've been given so many faith movies, family movies, the scripts, and they're so cheesy so times. They're just, yeah. time. they're just trying to hit you over the head with some moral lesson. Yeah. This is actually has a great lesson, but it, it you know it respects the audience and they're, they're going to get it and they want to have a good time in the in the meantime. And, and so it's a delightful movie. It'll be nice to see you and come yeah. back together yeah. too. Yes.